Hi, my name is Dallas Smith. I, uh, I'm born and raised from Vancouver, British Columbia. And uh, yeah, I'm down in Nashville doing a bunch of interviews in CRS week. Good that you're here. How was that? And that was perfect. <laughs> uh, it's like you do this all day. Oh, yeah, yeah. The first thing I want to talk about is you have the new EP lifted. And am I correct in thinking that this is your second project that you're putting out in this kind of Yes. Form? Um, We've done things a bit different in Canada. It's uh, we combined. Oh, actually, I had a, had a full length a record called "Jumped Right In." It was released in 2012. We had five singles um, up there released, and then uh, "Tipping Point" EP was the first uh, venture down here, um, as far as what I do. And then uh, "Lifted" is the second one. But uh, in Canada, we combined the Tipping Point EP and Lifted EP into one record. In one record, yeah. 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 So. And when you started working on Lifted, how did you approach the making of that in terms of what you wanted to say? Because you sort of had already kind of the debut was, was behind you. Yeah. What was sort of the next step that you wanted to reach? Um, just uh, creating more of a dynamic um, record, EP. I mean, uh, the five, six songs. Uh, um you know, obviously having uh, only five songs, it's tough to get a whole, uh, a lot of variety in, in five songs, but we tried our best to, to have that with, 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 the, with, the, with the AP, and um, I think we achieved that. I'm doing some different stuff with my voice. I've always um, been a good technical singer. I was more classically trained, so my, my battle has been trying to add that character and allowing myself to mess up and allow those accidents to happen to add those special moments in songs. So we really tried to... Um, to really uh, take off the training wheels, you know, with this and, and allow my voice to do some different stuff. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. And one of the things that I, when I started listening to this, and I know you've worked with him prior, I would have known Joey Moy was involved, mm. even without seeing his name. Yeah. Um, what does he add? What does he bring to, to your career? Uh, Joey's been, uh, not only is he a good friend, but um, uh, he's been instrumental in my career, even with the band that I was in before. Um, a 10-year career and Joy was actually the one who started that off. He took our demo tape and uh, passed it off to the right people and and uh, I've worked with Joey through my entire career so the last 15 years and Joe um, he sets the bar really high for the artists that he works with. Um, he can see what what they potentially can do and does his all to make sure that they reach that and nothing else is, is, is acceptable you know. Um, so he's really helped with my voice and pushing me and, and, and knowing that I could do more with what I do and, and has pushed me to do that. Um, but as far as his production, um, just huge production. It's very, yeah, it's, it's, it's big, big production. Um, but he, uh, yeah, he, he has a great ear. He recognizes a song. And if it's a good song but there's some broken parts of the song, he, he, he won't settle. He'll, he'll fix it and make sure it's right. Yeah. yeah. Well, one of the things that I find interesting about how he works is there's always, not in every song, because he does, you know, different songs need different things, but he'll have often, and it, that's happening in Wasting Gas, which is why you listen to it and you know his fingers are on it. Yeah. It, he creates these almost three layers of music before he gets to the song. Yeah. And then he put that crunchy guitar that he gets, he sticks that under the drum track in a, in a mix. And yep. Are you the artist who's interested in all that stuff and ask, like, endless questions? Or do you, are you more like... I'm pretty experienced in the studio, um, so I know why he's doing things, and I, so I don't really, I don't really question why he's doing it. Um, it's more of a, do you think you could use more of this? Do you think you could use yeah. more of that? Um, yeah, more of a how rather than why. Like, yeah, the guy who always wants to know how things are working. How can I learn how to do this myself? You know that kind of thing. No, no, no. I just, uh, yeah. I, I, don't, I don't ask too many hows. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I, I, I trust. Like I said, I have a long, long relationship with Joe, and I trust um, everything he's doing. And I'm a big fan of him. Like I think, he, I think he's a genius in the studio. So I'm really, I'm, it's fun to watch him and how his brain works. And yeah, yeah. When I was listening to Wasting Gas, the first time I listened to that song, I, I, what struck me about halfway through was I thought, you know, that's actually not a bad way to live life in general. It's kind of that idea of let's be free, let's not Just carefree, car have can't put too much weight on ourselves. Yeah. Yep. Um, is that was that at all in the writing room when you guys wrote that song or the thing that, that I loved about that song um, it was uh, it, it took me back to high school days where um, you get the keys to your parents car or, or your first car 
and uh, you got nowhere to go, but you're just picking up your friends and you're just driving. Yeah. Friday night, Saturday night, it's just that, that freedom, and that's what that took me back to that song. Yeah, the carefree sort of aspect of just going and hanging out and just that, uh, you know, the world is your oyster sort of sort of deal. You know, yeah, you kind of choose your own destiny for that night. Yeah. yeah, yeah. One of the things that I like doing when I interview people is go look at their live videos. Because um, there's stuff that you don't get from the recording. So I, I yeah, yeah. on YouTube and yeah, I, yeah. I, liked, I looked at some of your live videos that fans are just shooting from the crowd, you know, that kind of stuff. Yeah. And what I noticed is you have this really open communication with your audience. Where do you think that came from? Is that natural or is that cultivated over the years of playing all these places in, for increasing bigger audiences? I, I, I've, with the band uh, default that I was in, we toured a lot all over the world um uh, we did some we did tonight show we did some really really cool stuff yeah, yeah. um but i was always really like i hid behind the the fact that i was in a band um and i wasn't like a, a true front man it wasn't just my name up on the wall and, and i kind of hid behind that so i never really pushed myself to be a interactive i just kind of got up and did my thing and, mm -hmm. and as a band we did our thing um but with this you know, I look, I look back, it's my name on there, it's my name on the record. So I knew that I had to challenge myself that way. Um, so it wasn't cultivated, I just knew that I had to, who I am off the stage, I had to introduce that to people on the stage and figure out how that was going to work and, 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 and accept the fact that, you know, not everybody's going to like you, not everybody's going to like your personality, but yeah. the fact that you're getting up there and doing it and allowing your personality just to, to show will gain you more fans than not. So, um, yeah, I just, I just kind of stopped caring what people thought of me and I just kind of allowed myself to have fun and if I'm having fun then, then generally everybody else is going to have a good time too, yeah so. we'll connect to it I, yeah. I want to come back to a comment you made earlier one of the concepts I'm most interested in is the concept of vulnerability yeah and you said on on in the new record you had to kind of allow yourself to not strive for perfection yeah and be a little more vulnerable and be a little more you know allow myself to mess up was the phrase you used yeah is yeah. that important on stage too it is I, I i forget lyrics a lot i i allow myself to make mistakes i and it's fun i mean i, I don't get too hard on myself we have I just have fun with it um usually get a pretty good laugh out of, out of some of the lines that i can come up with after <laughs> after i forget the words <laughs> but um uh, yeah you know you talked about being able to connect um to people live i think i i know i know that Allowing that vulnerability and allowing those mistakes, the mistakes that sound good, um, that are by accident and by chance, those are the things that, that um, when I hear on radio, when I hear in a song, that helps me connect with the artist and to connect with the song because um, uh, you're feeling that emotion. They're channeling that to you, right? So, yeah. that, and that's, that's a very, very important thing that I've learned over the last you know, couple of records that I've done, um, especially in, in this um, genre and, and, and doing what we do now. Um, yeah, it's an important piece of that. It, 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 it can't be perfect. Nobody wants to... There's a lot of perfect singers out there. There's a lot of really, really great singers. But the trick is, is to be great, but um, but allow yourself to have those tasty moments and those tasty you know, mistakes that add character and add, add depth to... Um, to the, to the songs and, and yeah help you connect with the audience and help the song connect with the audience yeah, yeah. It, that's a good point you bring up and the, especially in this genre because I feel in from the point of a listener if I put myself in the shoes of a listener that in country music especially from the production side of things mm. people were starting to strive for too much perfection they were auto-tuning Carrie Underwood yeah why yeah um, yeah that stuff do you think that's ultimately where do you see that going? Oh, I, ho I hope, I hope, I mean, the auto-tuning thing and, and, and the tools they use in the studio is always going to be there. I mean, that's just going to, that's just going to be there. Um, it's not a bad thing when it's used, it's a bad thing when it's overused. Overused, I totally agree. So, the artists that I really, really um, look up to, uh, guys like Lee Bryce, where you put his records on and you talk about allowing those mistakes and those things to happen, the character and stuff, I don't think there's anybody better. Than, yeah. than, than him as far as those cracks and the pops and the and the vocal fries and all that stuff that yeah. he does just as, as, a, as a gifted singer you know it's it's that's what I love so I, I hope more of that happens because I love those little mistakes I love those moments yeah. you can't recreate they're just captured what do you think it is that you can do 
and not necessarily you personally, but one that one can do with a song that doesn't seem to really be possible with any other form of language. Like you could write an essay, but to really move a person often it takes music. What do you think is the property of a song that drives that? It's, it is a lot of things. I mean, the stars have to align uh, to really move somebody with, with, um, with a song. And if you can get the melody and the story and the voice and and the music and the production if you can get all those stars to align that's that's a very very special thing and there's not many songs that, that have all those things working for them at once out but when they do they work they work really really well and they move people big time what are some of those give me a for instance for yourself like what is do you remember a moment where you heard a song for the first time and you go well i need to sit down for a minute and take this in yeah yeah there's a there's a bunch i mean I, the one that i think of um I was, I was was young, but it was back. It's it's completely outside of the country music genre. But um, I was a big Oasis fan, and when I heard Champagne Supernova for the first time, that was just like that. That is a that is a song that is um it's 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 uh it's bigger than anything. It, it's it's yeah yeah those, those those songs for me are very few and far between. But that's definitely one of them. That's that'd be one of the first ones that I remember going wow yeah that's incredible for many different reasons. And then while on that topic of songs that are out there in the world what would you put which songs would you put on the soundtrack of your life oh wow so far? i grew up with um a lot of beatles was growing up abbey road was um was a mainstay in the house um that was my first musical memory was that that medley um coming on the radio i remember that uh that and then um you know my mom played a whole a whole ton of uh country my, my, my dad played a lot of classic rock stuff and my mom played a lot of country um so there's a there's a bunch i mean there's there's, there's songs there's alan jackson songs that i remember my mom I just listened back and brooks and dunn songs and i i just picture my mom vacuuming and singing along to these songs so that's that's definitely i have uh, association with a lot of songs like that um and then i was big into um uh and for me growing up when i was in high school i loved loved that band um so there's some, some songs there that i would uh yeah, definitely be part of my soundtrack. But yeah, and Keith Urban, a huge Keith Urban fan. So a lot of those songs, yeah, I have uh, great, great memories associated with those. Very cool. Thank yeah. you so much. All right, cool.